what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology and today we will continue with our bhagavad gita series discussions from the gita and today we will see lessons from the life of queen kunti yes 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 queen kunti is here finally so there you go if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up <laughs> and if you want me to make any other video then please let me know and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website below all right and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there like he was always there for queen queen kunti yes so who is queen kunti kunti is the mother of the pandavas in the mahabharat and you may be thinking why am i discussing lessons from kunti's life when we are talking of the gita because she is not there in the gita right <laughs> there's only arjuna and there's only krishna there neither is kunti mentioned in the arjun in the uh, conversation between krishna and arjuna in any way yes so you may be wondering why should we discuss about her at all yes or what's the importance why is she so important well she is very 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 important to understand because she will tell us which which is the attitude that we should cultivate to understand the gita otherwise we may learn the gita by heart all the shlokas one by one cut 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 by like missile we may keep saying shlokas but it may happen that after 50 years of reading the gita and imbibing by these spiritual principles we may still be lacking the conclusion or the realization which the gita is giving all of us because she has some underlying principles which we must have in ourselves yes we cannot have it like she had but uh, we have to try to follow in her, her footsteps yes so she exemplifies this principle of humility very much and okay let me give you a background of kunti before uh, speaking about her so kunti she as we know she's the mother of the pandavas and the eldest of the wives of pandu because pandu had two wives kunti and madri and kunti is from kunti bhoj that place yes and then she got married to pandu that was a swayamvara in which she selected pandu as her husband and after that she came to hastinapur and she took care of the entire family and then later on pandu left his body because of the curse of kindam rishi when he was about to unite with madri and this is how pandu left the planet and kunti had got a mantra from rishi durvasha yes rishi durvasha had given her a mantra that whoever you invoke whichever demigod that demigod that devta will come and give you something yes some say they were forced to give you a child and some say that they had to give you something yes so then kunti begot five sons through that mantra so first of all she had invited yudhishthir maharaj yes which means she had invited yamaraj through which uh, they begot yudhishthir because yamaraj is dharmaraj so dharmaraj is nobody else than yamaraj himself so they had invited yamaraj and then yudhishthir was born and then they invited vayudev by that bhima was born because bhima is strong like vayu like the wind and then they invited indra by whom arjuna was born so he was very chivalrous he was the best of the pandavas yes and then kunti also gave this mantra to madri because of which she begot twins nakul and sadev through the ashwini kumaras we all know that story right and before her marriage she had also uh, uh, out of her curiosity she was uh, trying to see if this mantra actually works and she had by mistake uh invoked surya dev by that and by that she also begot a son whose name was karna of course all right so today's discussion is not on the pandavas <laughs> today's discussion is on kunti so then what happened pandu left this planet and then kunti was left all alone with these five sons yes and one one of them were the biggest stalwarts and then she took responsibility of these five children and she very diligently with all her heart and soul she nourished them yes it's very difficult as a widow to do that of course you can always say that there was bhishma to also to take care of them but as a mother she didn't have 
a husband so it was very difficult but those are the material considerations yes oh my husband is not there no, there are controversies which are being hashed and the kurus from the day one they were very 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 envious of the pandavas unfortunately and they tried everything and every means to kill them yes to wipe them out from this earth and this was started in the initial days when they started poisoning bhima yes and this is how kunti had led her life can you imagine a mother you have five sons and all of their life is in threat all the time any time they can be mercilessly killed by duryodhana or shakuni yes and even when they grew up the controversies didn't end there yes so pandavas were sent to the forest yes their wife was insulted yes and dushasan also tried to he brought draupadi there and he insulted her and they also tried to undress her but by lord krishna's grace that could not happen and this is how her uh, can you imagine a mother going through all these difficulties uh, so many challenges my god but 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 amidst of all this see everybody knows all this about kunti yes that she faced all of these trials and tribulations but many people don't know that her name is in the immortal pages of the shrimad bhagavatam yes in the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam if you read you will find the prayers of queen kunti there which means she has the best of the best of the best of the best prayers which she had for lord krishna yes and in that there are so many places where she prays like perhaps nobody else has prayed yes so queen kunti will tell us what to pray sometimes people ask me oh my god i was praying this thing i didn't get i got so when we have a result oriented approach to prayer yes suppose i want a beautiful wife or a, a girl who wants a very handsome husband and then you pray and then you get <laughs> then you will say okay god exists what if you don't get then you say god doesn't exist so when your basis of god's presence and absence is on materialistic calculations then you are heading on a royal road for frustration that is not the right way to approach spirituality yes praying to god for materialistic things and when that gets or doesn't gets fulfilled you become frustrated or happy <laughs> if it is fulfilled you start jumping if it is not then you start crying and then you say oh god doesn't exist this is this is all nonsense yes so queen kunti sets the tone of prayers yes so initially she says that alaksham sarvabhutanam antar bahir avasthitam he says to lord krishna that she says you are an in the inside and in the outside also yes alaksham sarvabhutana you are everywhere <laughs> and then she says katham pashye mahistriya this means that o oh lord krishna how can i understand you as a woman because she says earlier tatha param hamsa nam muni nam amalatmanam so which means that she says to lord krishna o oh lord krishna you are so great you are only to be understood by paramahamsas tatha paramahamsanam muninam amalatmanam you are understood by the paramahamsas paramahamsas are the purest of the purest of the highest spiritually elevated beings of the highest topmost order yes paramahamsas hams is a swan which can separate milk and water so paramahamsa means one who is completely spiritual has no trace of materialistic uh, uh, entanglement inside that person yes tatha paramahamsana munina means you are to be understood by the munis yes munis who basically munis all one who is always thinking 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 about god <laughs> now muni may be thinking of somebody else also but muni of the highest level will think of god yes he is trying to analyze oh god is like this god is like that so she says tatha paramahamsana muni nam amalatmanam amalatmanam are the purest living entities amala is dirt and amala is pure yes amalatmanam means those atmaramas who are very very pure who do not have any material contamination no material desire yes you are to be understood by them yes any ordinary person cannot understand you and then she says katham pashye mahistriya <laughs> and then she says if you are only to be understood by these people then how can a woman like me understand you <laughs> now if some uh, if there's a feminist of uh, today that feminist of 21st century she 
hears these prayers <laughs> then she will say that oh my god kunti mahan is a victim of inferiority complex yes she is telling oh why 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 can't i understand now what if i am a woman i can understand <laughs> so it is very difficult to understand why kunti said like that yeah, so she feels that she is so humble although kunti maharani is in the highest level of spiritual uh, bliss in the highest level of spiritual realization that is why her prayers are there in the shrimad bhagavatam yes but still she is telling this that oh you are to be understood by the greatest of the greatest beings how can i understand you it's impossible for a woman like me to understand so she is acknowledging her humble position yes now that's very difficult to understand because Uh, somebody may say that oh just because you are a woman it doesn't mean that you can't understand god yes so actually it doesn't mean that actually it simply means that she's trying to take a humble role and say and she's not doing it artificially oh anyways i am a woman i can't understand you know she's not doing like she actually feels like that she's telling when all these great great personalities cannot understand you how can a woman like me understand you yes so this requires a lot of uh, substance inside to say like this and it also requires a lot of intelligence to understand what she's telling and she uh, so so many prayers are there you can take out the first canto and you can read the shrimad bhagavatam there you will find beautiful prayers of queen kunti so in that you will also find that she tells that shatter my attachment shatter my affection to the rishnis pandavas andhakas bhojas and let my consciousness flow to you o lord krishna just like the ganges flows towards the ocean yes which means that let let me be let me become detached from my family members from my sons from all these people the vrishnis the andhakas bhojas people from dwarka that side and let me only think of you nothing else i don't need anything now she is not an ordinary lady and the pandavas they are not like ordinary sons okay like mother saying ओ बेटा आ गया कॉलेज नो द पांडवाज आर हाईएस्ट ऑफ द हाईएस्ट स्पिरिचुअली एलिवेटेड बीइंग्स दे आर दे आर विद लॉर्ड कृष्णा 24 आवर्स कैन यू इमेजिन बट इवन देन शी इज टेलिंग दैट ओ शैटर माय अफेक्शन टू द पांडवाज व्हाई शी टेलिंग लाइक दिस बिकॉज़ शी इज इनडायरेक्टली टेलिंग दैट इवन दो दे मे बी स्पिरिचुअल बट आई एम स्टिल देयर मदर एंड आई माइट हैव दैट मटेरियल अफेक्शन दैट मटेरियलिस्टिक अटैचमेंट मे बी देयर सो शी इज टेलिंग शैटर दैट अटैचमेंट and let my consciousness flow towards you o lord krishna she is telling may i always think of you she is giving the example beautiful example of the ganges which flows to the ocean river ganga without any hindrance even if there are rocks stones mountains the ganges will keep flowing like this let my mind also flow towards you like that yes beautiful prayers are there and then at the end when lord krishna is about to leave for dwarka after the kurukshetra war is over all the Uh, the entire dynasty is extinguished everything is finished only the pandavas remain and parikshit maharaj was alive yes nobody sustained then she says to lord krishna that oh what terrible days have come upon us but now the war is over now good days have come right <laughs> why is she saying like this that, oh my god terrible days have come now <laughs> she never said like this in the entire mahabharat that terrible days have come but as soon as lord krishna is about to leave why does she say that oh my goodness terrible days have come no because she says when there was difficulty upon us you were always there with us but now there are no difficulties and now because of that you are going to dwarka back leaving all of us so then basically this means that kunti maharani said and in the prayers it said that kunti maharani says send more calamities in my life so that i can always remember you because when there are no difficulties in my life i forget you yes so now somebody may say oh a mother also may pray to god oh god whatever difficulties my child has give it to me now i will bear all his negative karma let him be happy you may say like that but it's very easy to say that when everything in your life is fine should i repeat it is very easy to say like that when everything in your life is fine everything is great everything is moving smoothly yes then i can also go and say to god oh god if my mother has some health problem give it to me but suppose i am having 20 health problems and then i may not be able to say that right <laughs> to be very honest but kunti maharani says that yes please send more difficulties please send more disasters na catastrophes in my life one after the other catastrophes even and 
when is she telling this after the entire dynasty is extinguished completely nobody sustained except the pandavas after that she is telling like that can you imagine her husband died all everybody perished i mean pandu died earlier but at the end she only had her five sons and nobody was remaining yes bhishma also perished everybody was dead and after that she is telling me telling to lord krishna that oh lord krishna please send more and more and more difficulties so she is not becoming complacent yes in her spiritual life she is not thinking okay anyways now everything is fine let me relax no no she is not like that so she exactly tells how we should study the gita that that urgency has to be there otherwise we will just read the gita like we read harry potter right we are just reading it like a story book or we read some other book uh, some uh, la la land some love story there was a boy there was a girl they fell in love then they enjoyed then they got killed ultimately yes so if this is the way we are reading the gita then we may not be able to understand much yes so we have to understand these personalities and then we have to imbibe the mood in which they are uh, speaking the gita and then by that we will understand how should we read, read the gita and how should we not read the gita <laughs> so we must maintain a humble attitude when we are reading the gita and then by that we can understand and this is what kunti maharaj displays of course i'll be making a series of um, videos on prayers of queen kunti that is very 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 important very essential to understand the gita so from now on i will be uh, making the series on prayers of queen kunti because that is very 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 essential to understand the mood of the gita otherwise we will not be able to understand yes we will just read the gita and then we will finish it yes 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 i have a certificate i have finished the bhagavad gita yes but that doesn't work so from now on we will discuss on queen kunti's prayers there are not many prayers i mean there are many prayers but i will select the best of them and whatever i have spoken now i will uh, explain more on them okay so that is it from my side more on queen kunti we will discuss yes so if you want a consultation then please approach me to my website and if you are new to the channel and you have not subscribed then please subscribe and if you want me to make any other video then let me know in the comments and if you like this video click the thumbs up okay see you with queen kunti's prayers okay bye bye